Hello everyone, Assalamu alaikum. This is me Faraz Kurban Rajpar and in this video lecture I am going to discuss with you about the basics of penicillin, its mechanism of action and physical properties. Introduction of Penicillin Penicillin class of antibiotic belongs to the naturally occurring antibiotic because it is obtained from the natural source from the fungi mold that is the penicillin. So there are the two major sources for the penicillin. One is the Penicillium notatum and second is the Penicillin chrysogenium. In the earlier days, Penicillin was obtained from the Penicillium notatum species. And later on, the highest concentration yield was obtained from the Penicillium chrysogenium. So, in comparison to the Penicillium notatum, the highest percentage yield of Penicillin antibiotic can be obtained from the Penicillium chrysogenium. Later on, this species was used as the source for obtaining penicillium and for utilization of penicillium for the production of its commercial antibiotic and, uh, and later on the several synthetic derivatives were made by the substitution of different functional group in the basic structure of penicillin. Now let's discuss the basic medicinal chemistry of the penicillin. If we are going to observe the basic chemical structure of penicillin, we may observe that penicillin belongs to the class of antibiotic that are the beta-lactam antibiotic. Beta-lactam antibiotic is the name given to the penicillin class on the basis of their chemical structure. So on this basis, we may observe that uh, penicillin contains the penum ring nucleus of the beta-lactam. Penum we have already studied in our uh, other video lecture that it is the ring nucleus of beta lactam that is composed of the two heterocyclic ring. One is the five member thiazolidine ring and that is fused with the common structural feature that is the four member beta lactam ring. These two rings are interconnected, uh, they are fused together to form the basic ring nucleus for penicillin that is the six amino penicillinic acid. Because at the 6th position, we have the 6 acyl amino side chain where the different functional group and rings are present to modify the structure and the different synthetic derivative of penicillin. So, these two rings and majorly the 4 member beta lactam ring is basically essential for the antibacterial activity of the penicillin. Nomenclature Penicillin can be named by the two, two methods. One is the chemical abstract method and other is the penum method. According to the chemical abstract method, penicillin can be named as the 4 thia 1 is a bicyclo 320 heptane. So this is basic ring for the chemical abstract method. So in this we know that the fourth position uh, is designated to the sulfur. And uh, if we are naming the penicillin according to the chemical abstract method for suppose, let's consider the example of benzene penicillin. It can be named as 6,2-phenyl-acetamido-3,3-dimethyl-7-oxo-4-thia-1-azabicycloheptan-2-carboxylic acid. The important point to remember that uh, according to the chemical abstract method, the carboxylic acid functional group comes at the position number 2 and the methyl substitution comes at the third position. And other method is the penum method. Penum method is utilized to name the penicillin according to the unsubstituted bicyclic ring present in the penicillin that is the penum. So according to the, this method, penicillin can be named as the 6 acylamino 2,2-dimethyl penum, 3 carboxylate. So in this method, the position of carboxylic acid comes at the third number position. Now let's check out the different physical properties of the penicillin. Penicillin normally occur in the crystalline form. The salts of penicillin are hygroscopic in nature. That's why they must be protected from the moisture. But if we are stabilizing in the dry form, then the salt can remain stable for years without the refrigeration. So they can be stable in the dry form because they are hygroscopic in nature. Beside this, the penicillin has the unpleasant taste. 
so if we are going to formulate the penicillin formulation for the children they must be made in the palatable form to make the dosage form compatible or palatable for the pediatric use as far as the natural penicillin are considered they are strongly dextrorotatory means if we are going to observe their rotation in the polarimeter they will rotate the plane of polarized right in the right direction so they are that's why dextrorotatory as the solubility of penicillin and the other physicochemical properties uh, like acid stability enzyme stability are directly related to the acyl amino side chain that is present at the sixth position means their solubility physicochemical properties their stability and stability can be modified by the substitution of the different functional group different rings at the sixth position so they, their solubility is, can be affected their acid stability is referring to the they like uh, there are certain penicillin that are acid stable means they can be used for the oral formulation and there are certain they are acid unstable so they are that's why they are not uh, compatible for the oral formulation and uh, their stability towards enzyme because there is a one enzyme you know that that is the beta lactamase or penicillinase enzyme that is going to destroy or degrade the penicillin so some penicillin are stable towards that enzyme and some are sensitive towards that enzyme so their stability towards the acidic media and the enzyme is directly related to that acyl amino side chain that is present at the sixth position the pka value of penicillin is referring that penicillin are generally acidic in nature and their pka value ranges from 2.5 to 3.0 but some of penicillin are amphoteric in nature. The free acids of penicillin cannot be used for the oral or parenteral administration. So that's why their salt formulation is needed. The sodium and potassium salts of penicillin, however, are soluble in water and are used for the oral absorption. There are certain other uh, salts of penicillin that can be made with the organic bases like benzathine, procaine and dehydrobamine. They have the limited water solubility because they are the organic bases and we know that the organic bases are insoluble in water but soluble in the organic solvent. So that's why they are used for the depot formulation. Besides this, some of the crystalline salts of penicillin are hygroscopic. Uh, like we have already discussed that uh, they are hygroscopic in nature that's why they must be protected from the moisture and they must be stored in a sealed container the mechanism of action of penicillin penicillin is going to target the cell wall region of the bacteria cell wall we know that it is the outermost layer of the bacterial cell that is going to protect the bacterial cell from the extreme condition of environment pH temperature and the osmotic pressure so basically the cell wall is necessary for the maintenance and protecting of the bacterial cell if penicillin is given penicillin will destroy the cell wall of the bacterial cell and so on the bacteria will not survive the cell wall of bacterial cell is made up of the um, different layers of the peptidoglycan. Peptidoglycan is nothing but it is the composition of the peptide and the sugar units. The sugar units that are involved in the peptidoglycan layer of the penicillin are of the two types. One is the N-acetyl murmuric acid and the second one is the N-acetyl glucosamine. So these basically the NAM and NAG are the two layer of the sugar molecule that are utilized in the formation of the peptidoglycan layer of the bacterial cell. So these different peptidoglycan layer they will uh, arrange in the parallel sequences and they will ultimately form the stable cell wall for the penicillin. The final stage 
for that is involved in the synthesis of these peptidoglycan layer is the displacement of the different uh, amino acid like the displacement of the D-alanine from the one side chain by the glycine. So once this displacement takes place then the stable peptidoglycan layer will be the form and ultimately the stable cell wall will be the form. So the penicillin will going to target this peptidoglycan layer and ultimately it will target the different enzymes that are involved in the synthesis of the peptidoglycan layer and it will inhibit that layer as synthesis and ultimately the bacterial cell wall will destroy. So like there are the 30 different kinds of enzymes that are involved in overall biosynthesis of the bacterial cell wall but the main enzyme that penicillin is going to target is the enzyme that is involved in the final cross-linking reaction and uh, the, in bacterial cell wall the penicillin will inhibit that enzyme and that enzyme is known as the transpeptidase enzyme transpeptidase enzyme is involved in the final cross-linking step of the peptide linkage and ultimately the penicillin is going to target this transpeptidase enzyme it will inhibit this enzyme and that's why once this enzyme is inhibited the stable cross-linking will not be formed and the cell wall will become the fragile and no wall and no longer it will protect the cell and ultimately the cell will destroy its swelling will occur and its bursting will occur because the main function of uh, the cell wall was the protect was to protect the bacterial cell from the extreme condition of the osmotic pressure and uh, other environmental condition. So once this cell wall has become fragile due to the inhibition of this transpeptide enzyme, so ultimately the cell will destroy. So in nutshell, the function of penicillin was to inhibit this transpeptidase enzyme and to inhibit the cross-linking of peptidoglycan and ultimately to destroy or inhibit the bacterial cell wall synthesis. So this is the diagram. This diagram shows the cross-linking of the peptidoglycan. This is the peptidoglycan structure of the bacterial cell wall. You may observe that uh, in the peptidoglycan layer are composed of the different sugar units. Over here you may observe that this is the NAM that was the N-acetylmuromeric acid and the N-acetylglucosamine. These layers are arranged in this parallel fashion like this is the one layer, this is the second layer and they are interconnected by the peptide and these are the peptidoglycan like uh, these are the several type of the amino acids that are going to cross link these layers. So in this fashion these peptidoglycan layer are arranged in the bacterial cell. So they are going to be cross-linked by the different type of enzyme. The main enzyme that is involved in the cross-linking was the transpeptidase enzyme. So once penicillin is given, this will cause the inhibition of this cross-linking. And once this cross-linking is inhibited, these layers will not be formed. And ultimately, the cell wall synthesis is going to be inhibited. Like this is an other side of the diagram shown. This is uh, G and M are showing the N-acetylmuramic acid and the N-acetylglucosamine region that are the uh, glucosamine or what we say the sugar unit of the peptidoglycan layer. So once these are the parallel arranged peptidoglycan layer. So on these sides penicillin will act. So once penicillin or any of the beta lactam antibiotic will be given they will going to target these sites. And uh, once the penicillin will act on these sites, like in this diagram, this cartoon will show uh, that penicillin is going to act on this site and they will inhibit the cross-linking of this peptidoglycan layer. And in this way, they are going to inhibit the bacterial cell wall synthesis. So this was all about the basic of the penicillin, its mechanism of action and physical properties.